Hello friends, in this video we are going to see what exactly the Fourier transform of sampled function is. Because as we switch from the continuous domain to that of the digital domain, we go through the discretization. So it involves actually the sampling and quantization. Just now we are finished with the introduction understanding of what exactly the Fourier transform or the one dimension or as image as a data two dimensional signal is and the understanding of frequency domain representation for the samples. So now we shall be having the understanding of Fourier transform of sampled functions. So let us begin with this topic. Fourier transform of sampled functions. The continuous functions have to be converted into a sequence of discrete values before they can be processed by a computer we know very well. Hence, this is actually accomplished by the two tasks that are sampling and quantization. Considering a uniform function represented as f of t, so here f actually represents intensity or amplitude level, whereas t represents the value onto the horizontal axis. Here t generally represents the time domain. So that signal into the continuous time we have to sample at uniform intervals the intervals shall be represented as delta of capital t of independent variable t so t is not dependent on any of the variable other than the x y z and like that we can say here so very independent quantity t we can say the graphical representation we can have for f of t like this the nomenclature for first part it is simply a continuous function f of t here we can see that onto the horizontal axis t is there this is the origin represented with the value 0 and here we can mark the amplitude level with the representation of f that is dependent on t which is independent so this is the amplitude level in continuous fashion we are having the variation so at each and every fraction of t we have the value of f hence we say it is a continuous function next we have the second type of signal that we have to take the help from this is actually a train of impulses used to model the sampling process so here again onto the horizontal axis we have t but the impulses are there at a specified time interval here the origin is matched to the earlier figure here it is again marked 0. The time interval is represented by delta t here. From this first impulse, if you need to go for the second impulse value, we have the marking twice delta t. Similar is the fashion onto the left hand side also onto the negative side. So 0 to minus delta t, minus delta t to minus twice delta t. So this way very infinite train of impulse we are going to use and that shall be helping us to have sampling of this continuous function so by the next step this sampling shall give us the product f of t with s and delta t to the suffix as a function of t here so this is representing the impulse train and this is representing the continuous signal that we have represented onto the earlier slide so here we obtain the impulse values at these particular uh, specified intervals and they are representing the amplitudes right from the original signal. So the intervals are same here. Now from that particular signal, we can name it the sampled function form as a product of the two signals shown onto the last side. We can say that there is figure A and figure B or signal A and signal B here. Next is the fourth part here we have represented these are representing only the sample values or the amplitude levels we can say that are obtained by the integration and using a shifting property of the impulse. So these dots represent only the amplitude levels and that too at a specified time interval of delta t. So this is represented f sub x k given by f in bracket k times delta t here so as we have the discretization and we can represent k as a parameter onto this horizontal axis now if we have the representation of f of u or mu sometimes it is referred 
to denote the Fourier transform of a continuous function f of t along with if you have the similar notation s of mu for denoting the Fourier transform for the train of impulse. As we have seen the product of these two signals first of all we have carried out to obtain the sampling of the function so that we can switch from continuous domain to that of the discrete domain. We know the convolution theorem and according to the convolution theorem the Fourier transform of the product of two functions in the spatial domain is the convolution of the transforms of the two functions into the frequency domain. So using this convolution theorem the sampled function Fourier transform we can represent f of mu that is having a bar over here and that can be obtained by this particular operation. So here the representation is of the original continuous value signal along with the impulse train the product of the two that is represented with the bar over this f of t and this is actually the convolution of the Fourier transforms of the continuous signal and that of the impulse train represented by f of mu convolved with s of mu here. So s of mu is actually the Fourier transform of impulse train as we have talked about is obtained by 1 upon a delta t. This is actually the normalization for the weight and it is with the summation for n is equal to minus infinity to infinity as we say the impulse train is infinite on negative as well as on positive side. The impulses are represented by the del here. So it is of mu minus n divided by delta t here. Next we can again have the representation of f of u bar given by f of u convolution with s of mu here. So it can be having this particular integration step, the normalization in primary. We can have the representation by 1 upon delta t summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity capital F in bracket u minus n divided by delta t here. The Fourier transform for any of the band limited signal if you consider so that can be represented by f of u at this particular vertical axis marked at the zero that is origin. So here we are having the mu as a parameter onto the horizontal axis. So this actually marks this particular band limited signal. Now as our topic is Fourier transform of the sampled functions we can say. So for sampling we have gone through the understanding. Next we again take the help of sampling theorem. So according to sampling theorem we shall be having the sampling rate sufficient so that the representation and recovery of the signal can be completed. So here we are going to represent the transforms of the corresponding sample function under the conditions of very first of all over sampling that will show then the critical sampling then it will be followed by under sampling. So very first of all for over sampling for a band limited signal we have shown as the previous one we have the representation of Fourier transform. So the bar is given over here f of u and here we have right for zero marking the band limited signal position 1 divided by delta t 2 divided by delta t down to the negative sides also and this goes on continuation. Now the transforms of the corresponding sampled function under the condition of critical sampling. So here these particular samples what we have represented into the earlier figure. So in that we are having the spacing in between the two samples. Here there is no spacing hence this is the condition of critical sampling. So this response we have obtained. Last condition is of under sampling where we have the overlapping and finally the resultant shape of this particular graph will be having like this. This is the Fourier transform corresponding to the sampling function under the condition of under sampling we can say. So the sampling theorem onto the two dimensional signal if you are using this particular Fourier transform tool shall be definitely applicable. By the next lecture we shall see how actually a function can have a reconstruction from its sample data and it will be followed by the topic of aliasing. So I hope you are understanding these particular details which are very very essential without which we cannot complete the image enhancement the fundamental step into the digital image processing. 
by the time if you are like this particular videos and want some more information you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you